In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between the Air Magnet Survey Pro application and the Tamograph Site Survey application. In this screen, you can see I've got a section of a floor plan already loaded into Air Magnet. I do have it scaled. It is a small section of, an, of a bigger floor plan, but I have it scaled to a doorway, and doorways are typically three feet, so I use that as the rule of thumb for this survey. I'm going to click Start and start collecting survey data. This is a passive site survey against a guest SSID, which is being broadcast. And right now the guest SSID is only being tied to the BG interface of the access point. So we're only going to see 2.4 gigahertz data when we're done. I have this set to collect data as I walk a path. You can see the blue spots are where the data was collected automatically. The red boxes will show up when I actually click and turn. I'm going to cut out the section of the survey so we can cut to the chase but I do have this set to collect data through the path as I walk it and not just manually as I click. And you can see the list of SSIDs with their signal to noise ratio and whatnot that were picked up by the Air Magnet application. I'm going to stop the survey. I'm going to save the passive survey as the default name. I'm going to click save to save my data. And then I'm going to go into display. From here we can see uh, our signal strength, the lowest signal strength that was detected was NEG60, which is great. Uh, NEG65 is voice, NEG75 is data, so NEG60 is even better than that. We can see the SSID uh, per individual access point as I click on each individual link off to the left. You can see the coverage area for that access point, even though I don't have the access point location defined by dragging the name of the access point to its spot on the floor plan. But you can see the coverage area that was detected for each unique MAC address broadcasting that guest SSID. And now that I've moved the slider up, you can see the entire color range for each individual AP's coverage area. A lot of the APs that were detected are not actually on the floor plan area where I surveyed, so that's why you're seeing really weak signal strengths for some of the access points that are in the list. I can also look at the signal to noise ratio for the area where I surveyed and you can see the signal to noise ratio, the lowest signal to noise ratio is like 25, 26, actually it was closer to 27, which is better than what we typically look for, which is 25 or better. Air Magnet also lets me look at the noise level and you can see the noise floor is rather low at NEG92, NEG92, NEG91. We can also look at the predictive data rate down and see what the speeds are going to be predicted at. And since this is a passive survey against an SSID, this is all guesstimation based upon the signal to noise ratio and the RSSI signals detected by Air Magnet. We can look at different 802.11n operating modes. This is operating in mixed mode uh, because they're 802.11n access points, but I do not have 40 megahertz wide channels enabled. We can look at the the channel width and see obviously it's 20 megahertz. We can look at the MCS for the transmit and receive, the MCS index numbers that are in use for transmit and receive for the access points. We can look at any kind of interference. There was some interference over here off to the left but certainly none to be terribly concerned about. Uh, blue is good in this instance because uh, we want the noise floor to be very low. Here I have clicked and dragged the access points to the locations on the floor plan and I'm looking at the per channel uh, display for the APs offering up the SSIDs. And you can see there are a bit more access points on 1 than 6 or 11. And that may be just because the wireless has not stabilized because this was a new deployment and had only been in operation for a couple of hours at this point. Now I have the Tamograph survey loaded up with the same floor plan. It's scaled to the same distance and I'm going to install the driver for my Orinoco card because it uses a different driver than the Air Magnet card requires. I'm going to install the driver and you should reboot after installing the driver just to be on the safe side if you're running Windows 7 like I am. Now I'm ready to do the survey. You can see the APs are starting to populate off to the left. That's how we know the driver is working. In this version of the Tamograph survey that I was using, um, you can see that some of the, or all of the access points offering up the guest SSID say unknown. Um, that shouldn't be the case. They should be displaying the AP name based upon information in the beacon field. Uh, but 
for whatever reason, there's a bug in the code, so it doesn't show up in this version of Tamagraph that I'm demonstrating. So when you click the survey data, it's basically the same thing as Air Magnet. You can click as you walk, or you can click at the end of a path. Um, you save that path, and you have collected data that you can then begin to display. The signal level visualization, actually, you have to, if you select the guest off to the left, you can see the assumed location of the access points based upon their signal strength. You can see our signal level here is displayed. The chart at the bottom shows the colors representing the different signal strengths that you see. You can also mouse over the fields to see what the signal strength is for a given area. The signal to noise ratio shows a similar chart and you can also change the extrapolation of the RF data beyond the given path you walked. So let's go back to the signal level and see what our coverage looks like. Um, compared to the signal to noise ratio. It looks to be about the same coverage and ratios detected between the two different applications. Uh, the noise floor is very low still again. Uh, we can look at the individual AP coverage areas which is a bit hard to understand what exactly this means but it's certainly an interesting chart. Maybe it would be easier to detect uh, what was going on for the AP coverage areas if there are less access points in a given area. We can look at the area covered by a given number of access points. You see blue is more than five APs covering that area. We can also look at the expected data rates, about 130. Air Magnet said it was 130, 140. So again, similar data. Frame format is mixed mode, just like it showed in the Air Magnet application. The channel bandwidth 20 megahertz wide channels. With Tamagraph, you can also use this for simulations and set requirements for your survey, which is interesting. Um, I have not used it for for simulations, but apparently you can set requirements of what you expect the wireless should be and then do a site survey uh, and see if it meets your requirements. And I think this would also come into play if you were doing a, a predictive survey. So I set it back to no visualization. Um, you can use GPS for outdoors. You can do point by point mode for surveying. Uh, so similar ways to collect data is the air magnet. I'm going to create another path on top of this first path. So we have multiple data paths to work with. And you can see that um, if you move too fast, you get a warning at the bottom saying you're clicking on the map too frequently or you're walking too fast, which is helpful um, that the application saying, hey, you might want to slow down. If you get stopped in the hallway, uh, you just click stop and then talk to the person to answer their question and then you can go back to surveying. If you're clicking along and you accidentally click where you didn't mean to, what you would do to remedy that situation is just grab grab the survey data point and move it to where it really should be or should have been. And it's a simple way to fix uh, stepping in the wrong place. You can rearrange your data point locations just by clicking and dragging them like you saw me just do. There are lots of different options under properties and options. You can see here I have three surveys that I have collected on this one floor plan. And as I select and deselect the different surveys, the approximate location of the guest access points changes. Um, what I wanted to do is to use the application to actually place the access points where they really were because they weren't quite on the mark and I'll show you that once I run a report. Um, you can see here in the report you can choose one or all of the data surveys that you've collected basically merging your data into a single report. You can save it as a PDF. In this instance I, sh I printed it to multiple JPEGs instead of a PDF and you can see the survey data shows you information much like what you see on the screen but um, it's, you can have the list of the APs that were detected you get maps of the signal strength, the signal level of the individual APs 
as they were detected, signal to noise ratio, you get multiple maps for that as well. Uh, but in this section here, I'm showing you that I'm using the Tamograph readout, the signal strength, um, to place the access points where they're actually located. I can visually locate them on the floor plan, so I'm using the signal strength off to the left. As it adjusts, it's telling me which one is the AP that I'm standing under. And then what I've done is I select, I'm going to select the access point that's got the hottest signal strength that I'm standing under, which in this next spot that I'm standing in is, let's see here, is access point, access point, looks like it's the one that's neg 48. So access point here, this one, I'm going to check, uncheck that one and check the checkbox of that access point. So it shows me where Tamograph thinks it is, and I'm going to drag the access point over to where it really is so that my survey data is accurate. And I'm going to do this with the rest of the access points that are detected um, or that I know that are installed on this floor plan. And you can see how I've done that by standing under the AP and finding its signal strength and then dragging its location to where it really should be on the map. So I have an accurate AP placement. There, this should have been easier to do because the list of AP should have not have all been unknown. That will be fixed in the next Tamograph release from what I've here. Um, but as you can see, there are a lot of similarities be as you can see, there are a lot of similarities between Air Magnet and Tamograph when it comes to using their applications for site survey data.